Good evening and a very warm welcome to Hartford College Chapel at Home, from our home to yours. Tonight it's the final Evensong of the academic year, when we both celebrate what has been and say goodbye to our leavers. It's the final service for Charlotte, our talented and much-loved senior organ scholar. She's chosen tonight's music which comprises Responses by Smith, Canticles in D by Brewer, Via Donna's Exultate Justi, and the hymn Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. It's also the final service of the ordinary of our chapel peculiar, our wonderful principal, Will Hutton. I'm really pleased that he's able to join us tonight to give a final address in that role. As we tentatively take steps out of lockdown in the UK, I can now take you home to chapel for much of tonight's service. But first, I want to introduce you to Nina. We have a number of chapel members who leave us this year. Nina is from Norway and with her wife Miriam, she's been a very faithful and enthusiastic member of our choir since their arrival in Oxford. Tonight, Nina is going to share her thoughts around our theme of looking forward to normal as she contemplates her time here and what lies ahead. Nina, over to you. I have to admit, Nina, these last couple of months, I've felt a bit lost. All the plans we made for the end of our academic year, for some of us the end of our degrees, have had to be either drastically changed or cancelled altogether. One week from today I was supposed to graduate and instead we're in lockdown. Me and my wife are stuck in a studio flat in Oxford, having to delay our travel home, and as a consequence, I've lost my summer job. Safe to say nothing right now feels normal. There's chaos, people are exhausted, people are sick. People are tired and people are losing friends or family because some people are dying. And yet, we've been in lockdown now for so long that most of us are getting very tired of it. We're ready to move on. We're looking forward to the normal to come, myself included. We often think of normal as a constant, an expectation of the way things should be. Normal is something that to a certain level, it's predictable. We plan, schedule, and we do. And as a result, we learn, we reflect, and we grow. And the truth is, for most of us, especially our students, normal includes a lot of change. We learn something new every day, and most of us have moved out from home within the last couple of years, looking forward to starting our own independent lives. Some of us will experience a massive change in our normal for every academic year, some even for every term, while for others, there's not really that much of a change. And moving to university maybe wasn't that big of a change either, but there's a huge change waiting for when we graduate. And a lot of us were preparing for that change. We were preparing for graduation and for the life to come after. The change we've seen with the pandemic was not something we foresaw. We didn't get to prepare. We didn't get to plan moving out or say goodbye to our friends or prepare for a society online. Some adjusting has gone pretty well, and some of it honestly hasn't. But there's still something left that is similar to the normal I've always had. And that is that I look forward. I look forward to what's to come next. In the past, my biggest change in normal happened a bit less than six years ago. And about six years ago, I was looking forward to one thing. I was looking forward to not being bullied as my normal everyday life for the first time in 16 years. At that point, I'd realised that because I'd been bullied for so long, the only traces of a normal with that I knew were really vague memories that predated this millennium. I knew that even though the change would be good, I would probably struggle to adjust and recognise it as such because it would be so foreign. I knew that the change could feel so wrong, simply because I couldn't really remember a life without. And I was right. 
In the beginning, I struggled to trust. I struggled to see that I was welcome or even wanted. But because I was aware, I moved forward. And although I look back occasionally, I've come so much further than anyone could have imagined. And in many ways, I think that the change we've seen now, even though it's not a change for the better, I think it's comparable. Because this entire setting is so new to most of us, adjusting and moving on has required a lot of hard work. We early on started discussing the positives in chapel, and I think that reminding ourselves of them and keeping ourselves aware has kept a lot of us going further than we thought we could. Three years ago, I was looking forward to starting university, and three months ago, I was looking forward to what was going to be an amazing Trinity term, before moving back to Norway, where I didn't have to stress about essays, entering a daily job, and I could start paying off some of my student loans before I considered further studies. And the thing is, today, despite the situation we're in and lockdown, my normal is still looking forward. Although I don't want to leave Oxford, not like this, I think it's time, at least for now. I look forward to seeing what the future brings for my fellow graduates, to seeing our world slowly rise again with lessons learned, hopefully allowing us to build stronger and even more inclusive communities. I look forward to work, to sharing a home with my wife that's bigger than one room, to spend time with some of my friends, and to build new friendships wherever I go next. Although, right now there's still a lot going on for most of us. To me it feels like we're kind of paused. And Mia, I look forward to pressing play. Thank you. 
be saying uh, in this kind of context, um, I think the question of how to live well, how to live with a moral compass, how to live rightly, has really kind of moved up the agenda. When I began at Hartford in 2011, of course there were debates about climate change, um, but that was before Extinction Rebellion and Greta Thunberg. Uh, of course, I mean, there were debates about kind of how to relate to ourselves as sexual beings, and the kind of gay debate was alive and kicking, but that's moved well beyond that now with the discussions about trans. Eating, uh, of course, the question of um, what we ate and, what, and how it formed us was alive in 2011, but the proportion of students um, who kind of eat vegan in 2020 is very much higher than it was nine years ago. And then of course, and last but not least, I mean the whole kind of issue of um, race and Black Lives Matter has come kind of bubbling to the fore kind of over the last two or three weeks with that, with those amazing pictures of the Minneapolis policeman having his knee on the neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds of George Floyd. And that's resonated around the world, I can't breathe. 
And I, I think it is a bit of an inflection moment. Um, I think you know, all these questions of how to live well, um, how to behave well, how we relate one to another, um, have, have actually crystallized in a sense in the you know, um, strength of feeling um, about kind of civilizational racism. Um, I and other heads of house um, in Oxford have co-authored co a letter to the um, Guardian um, in which we all, every single one of us, um, have insisted that we were committed to fighting discrimination and systemic racism wherever we found it. And we supported, uh, in that sense, Black Lives Matter. Um, we've um, <clears throat> I've also written to a member of staff saying that in Hartford wants to remain and is um, a welcoming and open community and that every single life in this college matters. Uh, but of course all this, I mean I'm recording this um, not in front of you actually in chapel um, because of COVID-19 and curiously Although I hate COVID-19 and I hate uh, uh, the deaths, the economic mayhem, the dislocation in all our lives. I mean, it's been kind of the most profound thing that's happened in my life. Um, there is, I think, one silver lining in the cloud. And that is that it's made everyone realize that we stand or fall together. This disease respects no boundaries, um, rich or poor, um, uh, black or white, um, it is, uh, of course, it's disproportionate in, the, in who it strikes, but nonetheless, it is uh, uh, a universal threat. And I'm reminded of the, in the 19th century of the way that uh, when it became clear that um, you, know, you could try and live the rich middle class on the west part of cities in Britain because that was where the wind came from. And if you live in the east part of cities, that's where all the germs were blowing through the city. And you could try to get clean water. But actually, you relied on sanitation, sewerage, clean water, clean air, like everyone else. Because you know, your lungs and your body were just as likely to be badly affected by kind of bad things. And I think that COVID-19 is kind of reasserting the value of public health. And that, and that we, all of us, um, both kind of in Britain and within Europe and globally, kind of have to pull together. Um, and I think in the next kind of years, I think ahead, a source of hope is that um, the way that students have begun to kind of ask questions, fundamental questions, about what it means to live well and to live morally and to live rightly. And if they have faith, how that relates to their faith. Uh, I think all of that is actually becoming kind of front and foremost in uh, people's minds and, and in the national debate. So, um, those are my reflections after nine years at Hartford. I have to say um, that some of the, uh, the under successive um, kind of uh, organ scholars and uh, the choir has got better and better, but in recent years, and the last kind of um, few terms in particular, the choir has reached new heights, and sometimes um, the sound you make in chapel is absolutely exquisite. And I also congratulate Mia for the way that uh, she has really kind of revived the chapel. Um, when I first arrived, there was really a discussion about whether a college like ours should even have a chapel. Um, that's all gone away completely. And uh, Mia uh, can take some pride in the fact um, that she's done that. So um, it is um, goodbye from me, uh, but more um, adieu or au revoir. I should be back from time to time to take pleasure in how you sing and take pleasure in this chapel and take pleasure in this wonderful heart for community um, that I've come to love so much. Um, Godspeed. May we pray. In gratitude, we pray. God of joy and hope, we thank you for this academic year. Your spirit of wisdom has empowered our hard work and discipline in such a way that our hunger for learning has been nourished with knowledge, discovery, creativity and determination. In gratitude we pray for our families, 
and makes proper use of our gifts. Give us courage to face the challenges of carving out a place in society where we might live in peace, service and gratitude. Give us strength to resist the temptations of greed, laziness, pride and envy as we strive to do and be our best. May your spirit guide us as we unfold the next chapters of our lives. Amen. Good and loving God, we thank you for the opportunity of another academic year. And for that opportunity, short though it may have been, to play a part in the lives of our students. We are grateful for your guidance and love as we shared in this important work. Please bless and guide our graduates as they reach this end and as they chart new beginnings. Please help them to use all that they have learned here to make the world a better place, to serve others in true solidarity and kinship, to seek ways to help the poor, the marginalised and those who are suffering, and to always seek the greater good. We know that some of them will experience pain and hardship, and we know that some of them already have, and we ask you to grant them solace and strength. Finally, Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to build our community together. We feel the discomfort of departure, especially in a time of remote transition. We ask that the bonds that have been created here remain strong, despite any distance. We ask all of this in your name, and in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus. Amen. We pray the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Oh, 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 oh.
all those who graduate to the hands of the Lord. May God, who began his good work in you, carry it through to completion, enabling you to use your talents to the full. May God give you the grace to make wise choices and to be faithful to your commitments, always confident in the support of those who love you. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships so that you will live deep in your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people so that you will work for justice, equality and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation and war, so that you will reach out your hand to comfort them and change their pain into joy. May God bless you with the foolishness to think that you can make a difference in the world, so that you will do the things which others tell you cannot be done. May your integrity be a gift to the world. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Hartford College. Yeah, I broke it. 